All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to talk about exponents and the order of operations. So in this section, you're going to learn how to use exponents, how to use the order of operations to simplify expressions, how to evaluate algebraic expressions, how to determine if given numbers are solutions to given equations, and how to translate words to symbols. So when we multiply the same number repeatedly, it's sometimes easier to write that multiplication using an exponent. And the exponents just tell us how many times to multiply the number by itself. So for example, if we have 2 times 2 times 2, we can just rewrite that as 2 to the third power, with 3 being the exponent. And if we multiply that all out, we would just get 8. Okay, so in, in this exponential expression, 2 is known as the base. It's the thing that's being raised to the power, the thing that's being multiplied. And 3 is known as the exponent. It's the part that's telling you how much or how many times to multiply them to get it. So this expression basically just means multiply 2 times itself 3 times. So 2 times 2 times 2. So let's practice this just a little bit. 2 to the 4th power is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which if we multiply that, it's just going to be 16. 7 to the first power, well, that's just 7 times itself once, and so that's just 7. And then finally, 3 fifths squared, that's 3 fifths times 3 fifths. 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 5. It's 25. So when you're dealing with mathematical problems, the order in which you do these mathematical operations is very important. The first thing you want to do is perform all operations within grouping symbols first. So these are things like parentheses, brackets, absolute values, fraction bars, so if you have the numerator and denominator of a fraction. You want to complete all of those grouping parts first. And to do that, you need to use the rest of the order in, in you need to use the rest of the order properly. Once you've dealt with all the grouping symbols, then you evaluate your exponential expressions, multiply out all your exponents. And then you want to multiply and divide in order from left to right, and add and subtract in order from left to right. So when you're doing order of operations, remember this helpful thing. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That just means parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. It's an easy way to remember the order. So now we want to simplify each of these expressions. We want to do this using that order of operations. So for the first one, order of operations says to do grouping symbols first. There's no grouping symbols in the first one. But there's an, ex, an exponent, so we get 6 divided by 3, plus 5 squared is just 5 times 5, and so that's 25. Now, we want to multiply and divide from left to right. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and that's all we have to divide. And then finally, we add and subtract. 2 plus 25 is just 27. Now we want to do a similar thing here for the second problem, except now we have a lot of grouping symbols. And so when you're dealing with a problem like this, you're going to work your way from the inside out. So we're going to start with the most inside grouping symbol. That's this part here. 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, and so we get 5 plus 3 times 2 minus 20, 2 times 13 minus 20. Now we're within the brackets, we need to multiply first, so we get 2 times 13 is 26 minus 20. 26 minus 20 is 6. And so we've gotten rid of all the grouping symbols. 
Now we need to multiply and divide from left to right. And so the first multi multiplication we come across is 3 times 6. And so we get 5 plus 18, and now we finally just add, and you get 23. And now the final problem, 3 plus 4 minus 3, 2 squared over 6 minus 3. When we're dealing with this problem, we want the grouping symbols in this case are the numerator and denominator. So we want to deal with those separately. We'll divide at the end. Well, in the numerator, we've got one other set of grouping symbols, which is that absolute value. The 4 minus 3 is just 1. And the absolute value of 1 is just 1. So you get 3 plus 1 plus 2 squared is just 2 times 2. And so that's 4. On the bottom, we have 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is just 3. And now we get 3 plus 1, which is 4, plus 4, which is 8, over 3. So make sure that you follow that order of operations when you're working these problems. That's going to be very, very important. So, an algebraic expression is any mathematical statement that does not contain an equal sign. So when we're talking about expressions, we're, we're talking about things that don't contain equal signs. Algebraic expressions also use letters, also known as variables. Uh, and in, in most commonly, we use x. And we use these variables or letters to represent unknown numbers. If we then assign those numbers a value, it's possible to evaluate the expression using our order of operations. So for example, we want to evaluate the expressions whenever x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 4. So what we have here is 3y squared. We can then take 3y squared, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace y with 4. We're just going to take out the letter and replace it with a parentheses. And then we're just going to plug in that number that we want it to be. So we want y to be 4. Now remember your order of operations. We have to do exponents before multiplication. So 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. And 3 times 16 is 48. So here we're just going to rewrite it and replace the letters with parentheses. And then we're just going to plug in the numbers that we want it to be. So we want y to be 4 and x to be 1. And now we use our order of operations. 2 times 4 is 8. And minus 1. 8 minus 1 is just 7. Finally, the last problem. We're once again going to replace the letters with parentheses and then plug in the values we want them to be. So y is 4, x is 1, 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16, 1 squared is just 1, and so we're just left with 15. So equations are similar expressions, except they contain an equal sign. If we want to determine if a number, if a given number is a solution to a given equation, we just simply plug in the number and determine if both sides are equal. If both sides are equal, then that number is a solution. If not, then it's not a solution. So we want to determine whether the number 3 is a solution to this equation. So very similarly like what we did just a minute ago, we're just going to replace x with parentheses. And then we're going to plug in 3 and solve both sides. We want to see if both sides are equal to each other. Well, 5 times 3 is 15, minus 10. 15 minus 10 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 is equal to 5. So yes, this is a solution. If we were to work this out and these two sides were not equal, then it would not be a solution.
Finally, words are often used in the place of mathematical symbols. And you can use the list here on this slide or in your, book, or in your textbook on page 24 to determine what operations these words are implying. But things like add just means sum plus added to increased. Subtract uh, is implied by difference of minus subtracted from. Uh, multiply is implied by product or times. Divide is implied by quotient. Divide, ratio. And then equals is implied by equals gives is, is the same as. And so we're going to use these words to write mathematical equations. So we want to write these following sentences as an algebraic expression or equation, and we're going to use x to represent an unknown number. And so here we want the quotient of 15 and a number is 4. So quotient of 15 and a number, that means we're going to say 15 divided by some number, and in this case we're going to use x, is means equals 4. If you wanted to write this in a fraction form, you could also write it 15 over x equals 4. The quotient of 15 and a number. Finally, we have 17 added to 4 times a number. Well, 4 times a number is going to be 4x, 4 times whatever the number is. We want to add 17 to that. And that is 21. And so you're just taking these words and making them into statements. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to use exponents, use the order of operations to simplify expressions, determine if a given number is a solution to an equation, and translate words into mathematical operations.